This is Colin O'Keefe for LXBN TV, a case that will soon be heard by the Colorado Supreme Court involving Dish Networks firing an employee for off-the-clock marijuana use stands to pit federal law against state law. Joining me now to explain the lawsuit and its potential impact is attorney Michael Groby. He is with Foley and Lardner, an author on their blog, Labor and Employment Perspectives. Uh, Michael, first, can you explain the basics and the backstory of this lawsuit? Sure, Colin. Um, the plaintiff in the case is a quadriplegic, and he was employed by Dish Network. And he was using, he was a licensed user of medical marijuana under Colorado's uh, medical marijuana law. Uh, he was using it, he, according to his complaint, he was uh, using it uh, pursuant to the license. He was using it off, off work and was never under the influence while at work. Uh, he tested positive uh, under a drug testing policy on, uh, at Dish Network and was discharged for that. He sued under one of Colorado's laws that's a life, lifestyle law or a lawful activity statute that provides that employers can't discriminate or can't discharge employees for engaging in lawful conduct outside of work that doesn't impact work. The trial court dismissed his complaint, and when he uh, appealed it to the Colorado Court of Appeals, the Court of Appeals looked at the, looked at the law and decided – um, tried to analyze whether because medical marijuana or marijuana in general continues to be unlawful under federal law, um, uh, but is lawful under state law, did that mean that it constituted lawful activity under the lawful activity statute? Court of Appeals determined that because it was still unlawful, it's a, it's a Schedule One narcotic under federal law, therefore it didn't qualify as lawful activity and was not did not provide the employee with any protection. Uh, even though the, the Colorado has this life uh, lawful activity statute that provides some protections. So that case um, in, um, decided they took that case to the Colorado Court of, uh, Supreme Court. Supreme Court's going to determine whether, one, whether the uh, lawful activity statute um, provides protection, whether it's lawful under uh, something that's uh, unlawful under federal law, but still lawful under state law. Um, provides gets protection under the, the lawful activity statute, and also whether uh, employees or just in, individuals in general who are licensed to use medical marijuana have a, a, a right um, to use that um, while it's off, outside of work and doesn't have an impact on um, job performance. I see. I assume not all states have this this lawful activity statute, but let's assume the the Colorado Supreme Court does side with the plaintiff here. What what would that mean uh, there in Colorado, and then also in other states that allow marijuana use both for uh, medicinal and recreational purposes? Sure, um, that that's true. Not all states have these type of lifestyle laws, but in Colorado, if if the court came down and said that there was this is constitutes lawful activity under the law the lawful activity statute. That, at least for medicinal purposes, that would provide protection for employees that are using it lawfully under state law, um, that are not using it at work and are not under the influence at work. But even under Colorado law, even if the court came down that way, employers would still not have to deal with employees showing up high or smoking weed at work. They still have protection not to have to do that. But it likely would require employers in Colorado to change their drug testing policies which a lot of times employers just have drug testing policies that say, if you test positive, you have a certain amount of metabolites. Um, that's one of the things they test for on, for medical marijuana or just marijuana in general, um, that you're discharged regardless of if you test over a certain limit, regardless of why you're high or why it's in your system. Um, they have to change that because if someone was using it outside of work but still, test, still had it in their system and they're not under the influence at work, um, they wouldn't be able to be discharged if the, if the court came down like that. Now, one interesting thing about the Colorado decision uh, is it's specifically under medical marijuana. And Colorado, uh, as of uh, the beginning of this year, started allowing recreational use of marijuana and recreational sales. So whether that would potentially uh, expand to outside of medical marijuana to recreational, that would potentially increase the headache for employers because not only would you have the small segment of people that are using it pursuant to the medical marijuana statute, which has some pretty limited you have to qualify under that to get a license. Now you'd have all these people that are using recreational uh, marijuana and they would potentially be protected as well. Um, outside of um, Colorado, um, other states um, such as Illinois have lifestyle laws and Illinois is just kind of in the infancy of, infancy of, of dealing with medical marijuana because they just started allowing that earlier this year. And courts, um, there's so many, uh, state laws vary, but courts tend to look at other courts if there's no experience in that jurisdiction to say, well, what have other courts say, said? And if, here, if the court, um, Colorado Supreme Court would say, hey, it's lawful, regardless of whether it's unlawful under federal law, and they should get some protection, 
employees, uh, employers and employees in Illinois and other states that have lifestyle laws may uh, find that their courts decide, well, if it's good enough for Colorado, it's good enough for us. Certainly, certainly. With the, the possible end of marijuana prohibition coming, uh, there are a lot of behind-the-scenes steps that take place, and this could be uh, a very big one. Once again, that was attorney Michael Groby. He is with Foley and Lardner. For more of his, his insight on this case and from his colleagues as well, be sure to visit laboremploymentperspectives.com. Thanks for joining me today, Michael. Thank you, Colin.